We are your home theater and AV questions answered. This is AV Rant. Want your home theater or AV question answered by Tom and Rob? Send it to question at avrant.com. Uh, Mitch R. has question. Mitch took our advice and moved the panels on his front wall to the corners while raising the panels on his side walls to satisfy Tom's OCD. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> he did not vacuum quite as nicely this time, though, so we can never have it all, can we? <laughs> um, <laughs> now we're showing pictures on the video part yeah, of the podcast. Just a couple of pictures. There. That's right. So, uh, the, the new one with the not quite as nice. Uh, it still looks like a very clean carpet to me. Cleaner no, than the rugs no I have in my place. But it uh, looks plush. But look it's, at the original. Oh, look at those. Carpet. Look at those vacuum lines in the first one. But yeah, but then the panels were were at different heights. And now oh, all the panels are nice, but oh, we don't have the vacuum lines. Yeah, oh, get those vacuum through. lines right, man. And, what and, a way and to live. Make those cables even more parallel as they come out of the wall together. <laughs> make them perfectly parallel uh here we go uh part a under mitch uh even with the panels on the front wall as wide apart as possible there's still only 93 inches between them which is not wide enough for the 110 inch screen he was planning should he go with a smaller screen get skinnier panels place them on the side walls instead i Move first of all panels yeah, <laughs> yeah never go with a smaller screen never <laughs> Well, I mean, uh, th there could be instances where a smaller screen would well, actually be the correct response. Not, not in this instance. If though, you uh, can help it, don't go with a smaller screen. Yeah, if if, if your panels being uh, on the front wall is what is preventing you from mounting the size of screen that you want, then move the panels. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, moving them to straddle the corners mm -hmm. might be a solution. That might get you enough space. Uh, and if you don't like the look of that, or if it still doesn't get you enough space, then by all means, move those panels that are presently on your front wall near the front Front corners to the side walls near the front corners right uh, they are still going to have an effect in that corner doing that and it's more important to have the correct size of screen he's not sitting in inconsequential distance from that front screen you want the larger screen size so yeah move and your panels I, I always feel like the most important place for panels like that are that first reflection point on the sides yeah which he does have yeah, side so wall panels for that anyway uh, he'll so be all these, right yeah, these are the panels that are right now behind his front speakers to catch the early reflection off the front gotcha. wall. Uh, but yeah, just having something towards the corner there, whether it's on the side, straddling it on the front wall. Um, yeah, the screen might fun. do some of that too. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. A little, a tiny little bit. If he put in a a, a, a backer, a backer, a yeah, yeah, he would be fine. There you Absolutely. go, something behind the screen. Yeah. All right. Uh, more questions here from Mitch. Uh, is the JVC X770 worth it over the X570? It's $7,000 versus $4,000. That's a big difference, which is a lot of money, yes. Uh, looking at the specs, the X770 offers higher contrast and full DCI P3 color. Is that enough to justify the price difference? Is there anything else? James, do you have an opinion on this one? <laughs> I looked at both of them. I, I, to be honest opinion. with you, no, no, no. you just stop right there. That was perfect. I would stay at the four thousand dollar mark and yeah. buy another couple subs. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a really that's really a tough one. Tough thing to answer because I, I mean I gotta say, look, if it wasn't such a substantial amount of money. I would, of course, opt for the one that has the full DCI-P3 color filter, because why not get the entire range of colors as opposed to just slightly above Rec. 709, which is what the X570 delivers. If you can get the higher native contrast, then of course you want the higher native contrast and the deeper black level. Like, it kind of goes without saying these are things that would be nice to have. Right, right. But then it it's down to the end. Of, is that worth three thousand dollars to you because right. that is yeah. a, a you could do amount. some room acoustics you could do some room adjustments uh you know lighting uh, you could do a ton of stuff for three grand yeah. yeah now i mean see the thing is there are people out there for whom seven thousand ten thousand dollars is not a lot of money to them 
So for hey, them, if it's, that's the case, rock on. Exactly. Buy the better you know, one. Yeah. For, for, for those individuals, it's an easy decision. Yeah, of course you go for that. I mean, that's actually a bargain compared to some of the, yeah. uh, you know, full actual 4K panel projectors that, that are out there because these JVCs are wobbling 1080p panels. We like to call it wobble K. Uh, but that's a big <laughs> way that they're bringing down the price. And they still, these JVCs, like bar none, they're regardless of the price yeah they have some of the best black levels and native contrast just yeah. bar none uh you, know, you put them up against anything of any price they're still excellent in terms of black levels and contrast so um yeah, DI, I, that's the dialog uh, technology with jvc's nailed oh yeah right? yeah the dila which is uh, yeah. their name for a liquid crystal on silicon Liqu yeah they've but, done yeah, a good job they've done a fantastic job there so yeah i mean the x570 Compared to everything else that's around four thousand dollars, it's like a clear step up yeah. in black levels and contrast. It's like very noticeable. So uh, to me, that X five seventy sounds like it's in that perfect part of the price to performance curve where to get any better it starts skyrocketing. In yeah, price. it's really high value. Yeah. And yeah. it's and it's Bang diminishing returns, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really tough. I mean, uh, to make, maybe this will make the decision a little bit easier for you, Mitch, which is considering your room in which you're going to be using this projector, is it blacked out? I'm talking back cave. I'm talking, you put your hand up <laughs> yeah, in front of your exactly. face and you can't see your hand because if it isn't, then you're not actually even going to really see the benefits of the X770. The X770 needs to be in a bat cave for you to actually be able to appreciate what it can do. Because are you going to do the Batman black. sound effect again? <laughs> no, <laughs> you told me not to. <laughs> so yeah, I'll do uh, it. No, 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 no. Batman. <laughs> so, so uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Mitch is completely blacking <clears throat> out his room. But if you're not Mitch, if your if your walls are anything other than flat black or coated in velvet, uh, if you're going to have even the slightest bit of ambient light, uh, then I can't tell you that it's worth it spending $3,000 for the X770 because you're not even gonna get the full benefit of that projector unless your room is really set up to maximize it. So maybe that'll help him decide. There you go. By the way, that was Rob's second mention of velvet. So I feel like I should speak like the ladies man now with a lisp and that is very thick. thick. That's right. <laughs> That's one nice thing at Seymour AV. Seymour AV, they actually sell big rolls of velvet and you don't have to get the super expensive Fidelio velvet. Uh, they have their baritone velvet, which is very nearly as good and considerably less expensive. So if you're yeah. actually going to cover some portion of your walls or ceiling, maybe make yourself in a shadow box around your frame. Um, Something around the mirror on the ceiling would be that's nice. That's right. Definitely. That's right. Man, that'll <laughs> pop. That'll be some high contrast. <laughs> it'll really pop. And it's, All right. and it's MF4 ready, so... Uh-huh. Anamorphic. I never say that right. Anamorphic. I know. Anamorphic. 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 Full HD 3D. But yeah, um, yeah, but both of those projectors uh HDR10 ready. Yeah. Um, you know, actually do show HDR quite nicely. Um it's funny because the X570 is now as bright as the X750 from last year. Oh, so, wow. So now the X770 is, of course, even a little bit brighter than that. Uh, but if you were worried that the X570 might not be bright enough, it's actually as bright as the 700 series from last year now. So, yeah, it's that X570 is a That's really a high good value. Good deal. It's a really high value. Once your question answered, send it to question at avrant.com. Is AV Rant. Now go out and listen to something.